everybody in the entire universe is in on some big black cosmic joke. What we don't realize is we've been bewitched by it. They're gonna do it to everyone. Tell me about mind control! I don't think that most people would want to know the truth. I do. I'm going to preach to you on Hollywood today, against Hollywood, obviously, and I want you to understand the purpose of it. You say, well, I don't even watch TV. I've never watched You'd be Every single, if any person here told me they'd never watched a movie before, I'd call you a liar, because I know people have, all right? And, and you and I have been, what we don't realize is we've been bewitched by it. And you say, oh, come on, I'll preach I don't think so. No, I know so. Okay, and I'm going to show you from the Word of God and from the truth of, of, of Hollywood's satanic roots of just what they're up to. But let me ask you a question: If somebody was, if somebody was fooling you, would you want to know it? If somebody had been, been deceiving you and lying to you for for years, would you want to know that you're being lied to? I mean, would you want to not? Would you want to be? Continue in darkness. Is it easier? Sometimes ignorance is bliss, we think. And it, it's easier. Let's just be dark about it, not know anything. But you say, well, I don't even watch television. I don't watch movies. I don't do that. And you know what? I haven't either for a couple of years, really. I mean, I've seen a fireproof or one of those movies here and there. But I mean, I, I don't, I don't spend any time watching television or I don't, in fact, we don't have any of the stations that come in. There's movies there. Well, now I would have brought it today, but I forgot. But I've got a trash bag full of everything that I got rid of in my house. And uh, that I'm going to burn. My family and I, we're going to burn. And we may even burn it out of Brother Bicey's house or something. Um, I don't want any demons in mind, so I'll burn it. No, just kidding. <laughs> I'm teasing. But uh, I'll, we'll probably burn it out of Brother Bicey's or something. But the, my point is that, that I don't want anything to do with Hollywood anymore. Once I've studied it and, I, and I, I've realized it, and I, again, I, have, I don't sit around and watch television or movies or anything like that. I cause too much trouble, and I don't have time to do that. I, I, I'm into everything else that I've got to do and, and, and study and read and pray and radio shows and, and, and everything else that God's called us to do here. But the point of this is I would want to know if I was lied to, if I had been duped, if I had been fooled. Now, you may have family members that are very heavily into watching television and movies and everything else like that. Well, when they ask you, you know, why don't you do it? You know, the Bible says that you and I are to be ready to give an answer to every man that asks you the reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. You and I should be able to intelligently explain why and the roots of it and everything else. I don't pretend that a lot of people are going to like what I'm about to say and what I'm about to reveal. Some of you may get upset with me today for doing it. Now, you, you understand me well enough to know that I really don't care if it upsets you. Amen. It doesn't matter to me if you get upset. You say, well, shouldn't you care about that? No, I should care about what God called me to preach. That's what I care about, okay? I, if you get your feelings hurt because of the truth, then Paul said, I made you sorrow after a godly sort. Amen? For godly sorrow worketh repentance not to be repented of, but the sorrow of this world worketh death. And I, I want you to understand where I'm coming from here, okay? And, and once you do, and, and once you see the Bible on it, if you think the devil stumbled upon ways to trick and fool God's people, you're sorely mistaken. And God's people are fooled today by this thing of Hollywood. Let's pray. Father, I pray you'd be with us now, Lord. I pray that, Lord, your spirit be poured upon this, and, Lord, that you'd bless. Help us to understand this, Lord. It's, Lord, this world is just plain wicked. And uh, the things that I've heard this week have vexed my soul concerning people caught up in sin and deceivableness and wickedness and all manner of wickedness, Lord, that you just wouldn't think you'd even hear about or even hit so close. But, Lord, I just pray that you'd use this for your honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, please, in your Bible. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Now, if you have any Hollywood heroes, I will probably break them down today. Those idols will be broken down, and uh, you can throw them in the Minnesota River if you want to, and you can drink of them like Moses made uh, the people drink. <laughs> but uh, uh, because you're going to find out today, surprisingly, that we've been duped, we've been fooled. And we all know that there's wickedness that comes out of Hollywood. We just don't understand the root of the wickedness. It's all the same. I, it's all the same. Anyway, let's go to Second Corinthians chapter eleven and verse number thirteen. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing 
You see that? It is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose ends shall be according to their works. Ministers of right, they'll, they'll be transformed into ministers of righteousness. Whether you realize this or not, Hollywood is, is pretty much the church of Satan. Hollywood has evangelists that go out and preach the good news, or the bad news, if you're saved, of the devil. They preach Satanism and humanism and wickedness. I'm not going to get all, I don't have time this week, but we won't be done here. I don't have time to go into the message of Hollywood, but we will go into that, that the evangelists of Hollywood preach. But we'll get to that. But today we're going to discuss the root of it. The Hollywood movies, movie industry has had such an impact on the world that only the Lord knows how deeply Christians have been influenced by it. Hollywood preaches sermons 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It preaches. It never sleeps. The devil never sleeps, and the television never sleeps either. The programming, whether it's Internet or wherever, it's not just to TV. I can watch television on my smartphone. I can take my smartphone, I can sit there, and I can watch any, any movie series, any television series, any event, right there in the, in the palm of my hand, right there. So it's not just the television as, as that instrument. It's all instruments of media today, whether it's iPads or, or whatever the case may be. But Hollywood continues to preach through Internet, through computers, through smartphones, through iPads. It has access to nearly all the world. But for now, we're going to look at satan- the satanic roots of Hollywood, of the industry itself, of its history. And as always, we'll weigh it according to the King James Bible and look at it. I want to prove to you today and and continue to prove in this series that Hollywood has waged war on God. Hollywood hates God. And I hate Hollywood. Amen? Amen? I hate Hollywood. Because they hate God. And they're satanic. And I've been duped and I've been fooled by it. And I don't like to be lied to. I don't like to be deceived. Whether someone of it was willful ignorance or not. I don't like to be deceived and fooled. If I would have remembered today, I would have brought you, after I started to study this out, I I filled up every single thing that I could find of Hollywood in my home. There's a few others that I've seen there that i I got to chuck over there that was there. But I've got some documentaries, some Bible things, some other things. But some of those are produced by Hollywood that I'm going to chuck in there too and throw those away. But I got a big old, one of those big yard bags full. And I gathered it all up and I sat it there. And I looked at my wife and I said, I'm going to burn this. I looked at my son, I'm going to burn this. He goes, yeah. But uh, he just likes to burn things. But, but the, <laughs> uh I'm gonna burn, I'm gonna burn all of them. I, I, I'm not having anything to do with that garbage anymore. Anything to do with that satanic, that root of Satan any longer. And, and I'm not telling you what to do in your home. You know I don't do that. You do whatever God leads you. But today, you and I will be without excuse as to the root of Hollywood. And let me ask you a question. If the root be bad, how about the fruit? If the root of it is bad, isn't the fruit of it bad? Matthew 7:17 7, even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit it's either evil or it's good now we don't have time to get into this but hollywood has preached to us that oh there's a gray area a lot of fundamental baptists preach that too but uh, there there's a gray area no there is no gray area it's either right or it's wrong It's either light or darkness. It's not twilight. It's either light or darkness. And the thing you'll have to ask yourself is, is there any movie, any television program, any any actor, anything that's so important to me that it's more important to God that I wouldn't destroy that? Because if there is, then you should throw it away now. Because it means that you've reared up an idol. And it's more important to you than God. Hmm. First, we look at the actual word Hollywood. I, I, I want you to look at that. And uh, I'm going to give you some information about that. One could say Hollywood or, or a holly tree. You know, bushes, holly bushes, things like that. Even this has strong satanic implications. See, how could a tree be satanic? No, it was used in this after a satanic manner. See, Satan can pervert anything. Amen. He could pervert anything. 
So let's look at the name here. By the way, um, you'll listen to this first part and you'll say, well, come on, now, now you're kind of, I mean, you're, you're stretching it. Well, I would say that if it was just that for information. But when it spreads out from there and the same message is preached all the way through there and the same evil is all the way through there, the name and everything else, then I, I, have, to, I have to weigh the evidence. And Brother Finney's a lawyer and he would tell you that once I look at all that evidence and I weigh that evidence, I mean, it, it has to be evil. And it, it had to be not an accident either that some, that, that name was chosen, Hollywood. Now, I want to read you this verse again. You've heard it the last couple of weeks a lot. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only who, who now, he who now let us will let until he be taken out of the way. I'm sorry I can't give you another story. I mean, this story is stranger than fiction, really, what I'm about to tell you. But the holly tree is part of mystery Babylon. It's, the, it's part of the same mystery Babylon. Now, that doesn't mean it's evil for you to have an evergreen tree. I'm not saying that, okay? So don't misunderstand what I'm saying. It, that's not the point. If you study what a holly tree is, you look at it, it has berries on it, but it's an evergreen tree basically with berries. It's a variation of it. You can see that. It's very plain. You can see pictures all over the Internet. Just Google it or whatever. You can see the variations of it. Now, the variations of it were used for pagan worship practices. Is it a coincidence? Is it? Oh, I wonder. Well, let's see how that holly tree was used. Nimrod started the great organized worldly apostasy from God that has dominated this world until now. Nimrod married his own mother, whose name was Samaris. After Nimrod's death, his so-called mother-wife Samaris propagated the evil doctrine of the survival of Nimrod as a spirit being. She claimed a full-grown evergreen tree sprang overnight from a dead tree stump, which symbolized the springing forth unto new life of the dead Nimrod. On each anniversary of his birth, she claimed Nimrod would visit the evergreen tree and leave gifts upon it. Ouch. I wasn't preaching on Christmas, was I? Just kind of snuck in there. Just kind of snuck right in there. You see how that happened? Just just kind of right in there. Mm. On each anniversary of his birth, she claimed Nimrod would visit the evergreen tree and leave gifts upon it. December 25th was the birthday of Nimrod. Ooh, that'll make everybody happy. This is the real origin of the Christmas tree. So basically, the holly tree was Nimrod or Osiris worship. Same thing. Same worship. It explains a lot. It sure does explain a lot. But that's just one witness. The word Hollywood, again, again, as an evergreen, as an evergreen tree or, or a holly bush or whatever, or a tree, uh, we covered the paganism of the Christmas tree. I'm not going to get into that, but we've talked about that before. Many don't realize, though, that Nimrod had everything to do with that. The date of December 25th had everything to do with Nimrod. All of that has something. All of this, do you see how the story's not different? Do you understand? Satan just picked a different way to fool us. He just, he, he's more subtle than any beast of the field. He, he's more subtle. Do you understand that? He's not going to come out right out and just point a finger at you and say, I hate God. He doesn't work that way. All right, you have to understand that. Now, let's look at another witness, so to speak. The holly tree is one of the sacred trees of Wicca and witchcraft and was of old a favored tree of the ancient Druids. In England, during the winter, against the barren whiteness of our snow and frost, the holly tree is an important native evergreen. Its glossy green leaves and clusters of red berries add a flash of color to trees without leaves and is one of the most striking plants in the woodlands. In pagan folklore, the holly tree is associated with the spirit of vegetation and the waning forces of nature, to which he is, a, he is personified as a mythical figure called the Holly King. The Holly King rules nature during its decline from the midsummer solstice through to the midwinter solstice, the Yule. At each of the solstice sabbats, the Holly King and his brother, the Oak King, engage in ritual combat for the attention of the goddess from whence the victor presides over nature through the following half of the year. In his personification as the Holly King, he is often depicted as an old man dressed in winter clothing, wearing a wreath of holly on his head and walking with the aid of a staff from, made from a holly branch. This is symbolic of the fertile interaction of the goddess and god during nature's decline and the darkest time of the year. At Yule, after his battle with the Oak King, the new light of the sun god reemerges to encourage fresh growth during the coming new year. After the advent of Christianity and during Christmas and New Year celebrations, a man will be dressed up and covered in holly branches and leaves while a woman was likewise dressed in the female counterpart of the holly, the ivy, uh, and together paraded through the streets during uh, leading the, the old year into, new, into the new year. You're not going to understand what I'm saying right now, 
But you, you have to understand something that all of the fornication that you're seeing, all of the wickedness, all of the debauchery that you're seeing, all the deviancy that you're seeing is all satanic. It is all led by the devil. The fornication, everything else. Why do you think the message of Hollywood is all fornication and wickedness and situation ethics and everything else? You say, how does that have to do with a tree? Hollywood. It's not an accident, folks. You have to understand something. These people love, Satanists love using images. They love, you love using names and pictures and numbers. They love it. It's part of what they do. And they laugh at God's people. They laugh at them because they engage in it. Pliny the Elder, A.D. 23, a Roman naturalist in his classic historian, naturalist, an old world encyclopedia study of plants and animal life, tells us that if the holly is planted near a house or a farm, it would be repelled, poisoned, and defended it from lightning and witchcraft. Also that its flowers cause water to freeze and its wood when thrown into an, at an animal, even without touching it, had the power to compel the animal to return and lie down. Do you see the mystical stuff? Do you, do you understand what it's about? The numbers, I know it'll all come together. Just keep listening, okay? I know it doesn't make sense right now to some of you, but you just got to keep listening. This is one of those sermons where you have to just listen and, and step by step and follow it through because it all leads to the same place, to the same place. You see, they chose that tree for a reason. It wasn't an accident that this tree was chosen. It was chosen on purpose. The, the, the name Hollywood was chosen on purpose. Do you understand? It wasn't, it wasn't an accident. In Celtic astrology, it's called the feminine energy. Holly is a sacred tree of Celtic astrology. From the 8th of July to August 4th, the sacred spear of Odin was made of holly. The Roman god Mars rules over this mighty wood related to the elemental earth, associated by Druidic tradition to the grand majesty of the unicorn. The smith god... Govanon considers this wood to be sacred. It also has magical properties. Now listen to this. Pay attention closely. Witches use it. A wand of holly. They use it for a purpose. Now listen to what the purpose is. Purity, strength, logic, power transfer, protection. Now listen to this next part. Holly wands are often used in magic concerning sleep. Are you listening? I said concerning sleep. Does anybody know what happens to somebody when they watch television for about 10 minutes? Brother Andrew, what happens to somebody when they watch television after 10 minutes? Your mind shuts down and you're susceptible to subliminal messages. You start to pick up subliminal messages. Oh, they don't use subliminal messages, really? Because i got 35 pictures I can show you right now of Disney characters that they put all that smut in those movies. Children's movies. Pornography. Right in the children's movies. Say, no, they don't do that. Oh, yes, they do. Oh, yes, they do. In the most innocent ones you can find. Why? Because Nimrod. That's why. It's all about Osiris and Nimrod. Hey, can I, can I share something with you that the top 100 movies that you watch are full of Illuminati signs? Do you know that every single movie that you've ever watched has the all-seeing eye in it everywhere? Now, why would it have that? Hmm. Are you telling me that even Goofy and Mickey Mouse and all? Oh man, they're everywhere. I could show you a picture right now in one of the movies, in one of the little 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 cartoons that says "Ask about Illuminati" right there. Oh, I'm going to get to Disney. That's another one. In the next sermon next week, it'll be "Bye Bye Mickey." All right. Now you may not like that, and I understand that, but listen. I'm mad because the devil has fooled God's people. What are you mad about? Are you mad because one of your titles is getting crushed? Are you and I mad because television or movies or something like that is off limits to God and we shouldn't be watching the ones that are produced by Hollywood and the stuff that's pushed out there that's pushing Illuminati and wickedness? Does that make you mad? Then you need to get your heart right with God. Amen. Don't get mad at the message. Or the messenger, make sure you get mad at the devil for fooling you. Remember, we're God's children here. We hold up the truth. And if it's truth, then we get the error out of our lives. We don't care what the devil, we don't care what the world thinks, we don't care what our family thinks. We get it out of our lives. That's what we do. Because we're a called out assembly of people. 
I wasn't going to preach about content. Now i got to back up again. This is going to take five hours. It is said that a man who carries the leaves and berries of a holly is irresistible to women. Now, why does that matter to witches? Why is that important? Because it's all the same plan. It's all the same, the deviancy, the fornication, the wickedness. It's all the same thing. It's never changed. It's the same mystery of iniquity. It's the same mystery of Babylon. It's the same Illuminati. It's just a different front to attack you on. I'm going to show you today that witches believe this is true. I'm going to show you today how the high priest of Satan's church says he don't even let his children watch television. I wouldn't let my son watch television. Be nuts. Hmm. All right, there's convicting, isn't it? That's right. The children of this world are wiser than the children of light. Since the story of the rulership of the Holly King and the Oak King deal with cycles and rebirth, it is often used in magic to ease the loss of loved ones to death. It also carries property of the sacred material advance. So as we see, even the name has its roots in Satanism. We also should look at the fact that it was used by witches for sleep. Understand that. Get that, okay? Get that. It makes, it'll make sense when you understand the bewitching powers. And advertisers will fully admit to you that they put subliminal messages in things. They do that on purpose. That they know that your brain shuts down. They know that it shuts down if you watch a program for a certain amount of time and your subconscious goes like this and it, and it receives everything. Now, I, I'm not going to get into that today, okay? I'm going to get into that next week. So you understand that. I'm trying not to get into that today, but, but, but I, I want, to, I have to lay a foundation for you to understand that this is satanic. That's what it is. Do you understand the connection of the spirit world in this? Do you understand that witches say it? Celtic, uh, Celtic paganism says it? They understand. They understand where the name comes from. They understand the importance of it. They get it. Now, that's just the name, so that can't mean a whole lot, right? It must just be an isolated situation. That must be what it is. A reminder of what God says about familiar spirits before we get into the meat of this. In Leviticus chapter 19 and verse number 31, Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Leviticus 20, verse 6, And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits, and after wizards to go a-whoring after them, I will even set my face against that soul and will cut him off from among his people. Leviticus 20, verse 7, is very convicting for God's people. Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be ye holy, for I am the Lord your God. Deuteronomy 18, 10, There shall not be found among you, any one that maketh his son or daughter to pass through the fire that useth divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch. Now, come on, that can't be going on in Hollywood, can it? Or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer. Second Kings 23, moreover, the workers with familiar spirits and the wizards and the images and the idols and all the abominations that were spied in the land of Judah and in Jerusalem, did Josiah put away that he might perform the words of the Lord which are written in the book that Hilkiah the priest found in the house of the Lord? Put it all away. Why? Familiar spirits. You know what a familiar spirit is? If you don't, go back and start listening to some sermons. I preached on the spirit world for the last month. Actually, two months probably. Go back and listen to some of them. Put your armor on. And the sons of God, the daughters of men. All of these sermons are on there. All of these sermons of the spirit world and understanding the devil's attack on us. It's all there. You can listen to them. Acts 16, verse 16. And it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel, possessed with the spirit of divination, met us, which brought her masters much gain by saying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. She was a demon-possessed lady with divination powers, and her masters were making much money off of her being able to tell the future, her being able to entertain those men through that. God says that those psychics, those that consult spirits, we are to have nothing to do with. We're to stay away from them. We're to ignore them. Do you suppose God wants us to be entertained by them? Well, let me ask you this. Do you believe that you've been entertained by devils? Think about it. Have you and I been entertained by devils? 
I'm telling you, most preachers will not preach on this. I'm not exalting myself because I just loaded up a garbage bag full of stuff and set it out, but I'm going to burn it. And why? I'm preaching this to you because most people won't preach on this. Why? Well, because members don't like this. It steps on their toes. It steps on their entertainment idols. My little children, keep yourselves from idols. That was written to the saved, not the lost. Why? Because God knew that you and I would rear up idols in our lives. And God warned us about that, to put away those idols. So why am I talking about psychics and everything else? Because the root of Hollywood, the root of it, are actors that consult familiar spirits. That's the, that's the root of it. That's what they do. You say, no, it can't be. No, folks, it's not an isolated incident, but it's a common trend in the Hollywood industry. The truth will either make you mad or will lead you to get right with God Almighty. One of it will happen. One of the most popular, I'm going to go through a series of, of Hollywood actors. Some of you won't know them, okay? So, some of you, you older, my age and older, you'll probably have heard of them. Okay, some of you won't, but it was the foundational period of Hollywood. And that's why I'm talking about if the root is bad, then the fruit is bad. Do you understand that? If it's the root, then it's the fruit. And I want you to understand what these men said. Do you understand that you and I go into the closet with our faith and these movie stars openly tell you they're Satanists? They openly tell you that they consult wizards and they consult they consult devils. They brag about it. In fact, they, they glory in it. You know why? Because they know that, that most people and a lot of Christians, or many that say they're Christians, will still keep buying their movies and still keep funding ho- the Hollywood machine. Because unless somebody confronts you with it, unless, unless you and I are called to repentance about it, unless the Word of God is preached, then Acts 19 will never happen. Where you take your curious books and all of those things and you burn them and you count the pieces of silver that are 250,000 pieces of silver that they burn. Why? Because somebody preached. Somebody told God's people the truth. And they said, well, I can't have that in my house. It's wrong. One of the most popular Hollywood actors that was, that changed, fundamentally changed America was James Dean. He fundamentally changed America. His movies that came out changed the whole dynamic of what a family was supposed to be, of what a son was supposed to be to a father, the rebellion that was led to that. And every, I mean, he, it was open, it was blatant. Hollywood has never produced anything that was wholesome and biblical. Listen, when somebody gives you some morality... You cannot trade in morality for holiness and righteousness. Do you understand that? Who cares if Hollywood preached some perverted morality? Perverted morality or morality only goes so far and it runs out of steam. Holiness is of God and it asks for eternity. Morality is Satan's cheap trick to fool you. Another message will cover what he actually preached in his movies. But listen, actor Marty, Martin Sheen, some of you know who he is, pays tribute to Dean for his role as a change agent. Jim Dean, J- James Dean and Elvis were the spokesmen for an entire generation. When I was in acting school in New York years ago, there was a saying that if Marlon Brando changed the way people acted, then James Dean changed the way people lived. He was the greatest actor who ever lived. He was, a, he was simply a genius. End quote. Where did his geniusness come from? I wonder. Another man said they wore what he wore. Recalled Stuart Stern, scriptwriter for Rebel Without a Cause. Rebel Without a Cause. How many of you have heard of that movie? Probably seen it, right? Yeah, yeah. Listen, if you've seen something wicked, I've seen something wicked, or so I'm not. I'm not here to poke a finger at anybody. Amen. I'm, I'm just telling you. You've seen it. Rebel Without a Cause. Rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. They walked as he walked. They played the parts they saw him play. They searched the answers they thought he was searching for. Some found a kinship they had never known before. Suddenly, teenagers underwent transformations of mind-blowing proportions in emulation of his movies. Jeans, t-shirts, leather jackets, hairstyles, fast cars, all became the popular trends of the day. The new measuring stick for men's success with the women depended on how close they came to Dean's heartthrob image. His posters and movie memorabilia 
plastered the walls of teenage girls who still longed for their knight in shining armor. Dean was successful in reshaping the image of what the knight was supposed to represent. Randall Reese, author of The Unabridged D James Dean. What I'm trying to do is lay a groundwork so you understand the fundamental change that took place in America due to Hollywood, what it did to this country, how it changed it, and how it was all of the devil. It was all, and I don't mean the devil was in the bat, was, was far up and away from it. No, I mean he was indwelling it. Dean was led by devils. Familiar spirits. Dean's aunt told of how even as a young man he had contact with spirit entities. He said that he would have conversations with the tree and when questioned if the tree talked back, he wasn't talking to the tree or the roots, he said laughing. I said, well, who are you talking to? He just looked at me with a clean face and said, my mother. James D. Ward, a personal friend of Dean, said he said, and I quote, he said he believed the ghost of his dead mother came to him. Dean actively sought out spirits and spirit guides to help forge his path to success. Beulah Roth, another personal friend, recalls a time when Dean wanted to get in touch with a dead actress named Sarah Bernhardt. Roth says, and I quote, There was a hotel in Venice, California where Sarah Bernhardt had stayed when she, became, when she came here to perform. Jimmy was thrilled. He said, let's go to the hotel. So we go in and, and it's a flea bag hotel, a transient hotel, and no one there had heard of Sarah Bernhardt except for one old guy who said, oh yeah, I remember that French actress. And we said, do you remember the room? And he said, yeah, I'll take you up there. He took us up to, the, to this really horrible room. I guess in its day it was elegant. And Jimmy said, you go out of the room. I want to be here alone. I want Sarah Bernhardt to come to me. And he said he lay on the bed where she had slept and he really felt that he had made contact with Sarah Bernhardt. End quote. They're devils. Do you understand that? He is seeking the familiar spirits. They're devils. This is what Hollywood is. It's full of devils. I say, come on, preacher. Why do you got to bring this stuff up? Because Hollywood's roots is in the rebellion of witchcraft. It's always been there to get you away from God. It's always been there to get you, get, give you something else to do besides read your Bible and pray, to entertain your flesh, to shut down your mind and have it you with devils so they can take over and they can rule your conscience. That's exactly what it is. It's exactly what it's been about. He goes on to say this. He sensed moments in Earth as, Earth a Kit was a, a hero of his. Eartha's performances when it seemed to him that everything she knew was fused directly into a moment. Even things having nothing to do with her performing. He thought translated directly into, into one energy force, a magic connection. He says Jimmy was convinced that Eartha had special powers and knowledge she could deliver to him by some kind of osmosis. Jimmy Dean record, re, reportedly says, I have a fairly adequate knowledge of satanic forces. Isn't that great? Isn't that great for God's people? Do you realize what this is saying? This is saying that you and I, if we've watched that movie, we've been entertained by devils. We've had devils actually entertaining us. And we wonder why our homes are a wreck and a mess when we invite devils into them. We wonder why our children are a mess when we invite devils, devils into our home. Sit them down in front of devils and let them listen to devils teach them. Dean boastfully told Hita Hopper, I had studied the golden bow. Anybody know what that is? Aleister Crowley. Anybody know who Aleister Crowley is? Probably one of the most wicked men that ever lived. Satanists, occultists, New World Order, hired by the federal government for mind control experiments. Hmm. Aleister Crowley writes in his 960-page autobiography, The Golden Bow, and in, in the writing of this book, I was much assisted by Fraser's Golden Bow. Crowley placed Fraser's writings in his camp in regard to Christianity, which delved deep into Crowley's form of magic. According to Crowley, Fraser agreed that Christianity was historically false, morally infamous, politically contemptible, and socially pestilential. He said it was a pestilence, Christianity was. Regarding Dean's study of the saved, he was one of the wickedest homosexual serial killers in history. Another of Dean's favorite writers was a man by the name of Oscar Wilde. Oscar Wilde was an occultic homosexual playwright whom Crow Alistair Crowley paid no small token of admiration to throughout his writings. Long-term girlfriend Dizzy Sheridan insightfully relates, the things Jimmy Dean reads were sort of a personification of himself. You see how these men were led by the devils? They consulted spirits. There was something a little mad, somebody said, a little possessed about James Dean. 
Each of his three major films conjures up a self-absorbed, hobgoblin kind of insanity. His co-star, Julia Harris, said of him, You see, he was mercurial, unpredictable, always putting you on, which I didn't mind because he was very beguiling. He did manipulate people, and he knew he was doing it. How? By the power of a devil. Mm -hmm. His whole being was put into motion by his involvement on stage. There, his energies worked for him, and it felt good to command attention and experience power and a sense of manipulation. The whole place could be in my hand, Jimmy said, in my personal control. Everyone out there, the people, the others on stage with me, it's like I was the sun in a universe. I could be giving life to all of it. These people understand what kind of power they possess over people. They understand. See, they know it. They know. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Constantly preaching their message. And people place their children in front of it all day as a babysitter. Okay, so what do you think about God? When spoken of about God, Dean said, there was no God. There was only art. Only the composer. The creator of the symphony. He stole the fear of God from people's hearts, not only through his movies, but also through statements such as, no matter what they say, there isn't any heaven. There's no hell either. He ragged Christianity as those destructive influences of beliefs based on torture and blood and crucifixion. Instead, he radiated the philosophies of Satanism, proclaiming, I believe in freedom, not God. What is he saying? The mantra of Aleister Crowley, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Is not that the message of Hollywood? Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Really? Is there anything that Hollywood has not taught? Is there anything anything that Hollywood is? I'm not going to get into it. I got. I keep wanting to go to content because it's so stinking wicked. But but think about it this way: homosexuality, fornication, bestiality, rape, murder, incest. Is there anything they haven't taught? Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Out of chaos comes order, a new order. He talked about being hanged, about suffocation, and was trying to imagine being guillotined and whether the eyes fluttered with any last second sight. Jimmy's talk of death, dying, and dismemberment wasn't as exciting or interesting to me as it was to him. He talked about, I'm not going to read all of it, but he talked about dying. He was always fascinated with death. Oh, well, that's interesting. Where would he get that from? Well, I don't know. What do you see on television 24 hours a day, seven days a week? What do you see? Death. Death. Devils are obsessed with death. Is it an accident? No. When asked why he was so fascinated with death, he replied, and I quote, that's the only way I will have any peace. There's no peace for the damned. But you see, these men in Hollywood and women in Hollywood, they sell their souls to the devil. They sell their souls to Satan. Needless to say, the deceiving devils that were in him that made him popular could not preserve his life, and he died a tragic death. But let's let's look at a few others here, a few other examples. Decade by decade, if this is just an accident. Let's go to 1920. Let's go back before James Dean. Every night, Natasha would hold a seance calling forth help from the spirit world and her creative undertaking. Then, pencil and paper in hand, she would go into a trance and start writing. After her outpourings were typed up, they were brought up to the set the next day and given to the director. That was 1920. That was the first Hollywood couple called the Valentinas. You can look that couple up and find out that they were the first couple. Her work helped topple the biblical values of North America. Mae West's contact with the spirit world was responsible for producing the scripts that catapulted her into the movie scene. She let her, herself be used as a medium for spirits and would hold evenings of psychic readings. West psychic Kenny Kingston tells us when she was upset that no one had been able to come up with a script idea, she had walked about her room saying, Forces, forces, come to me and help me write a script. She would begin to hear voices and images as the plot was revealed to her. May would summon stenographers to work with her around the clock as she would lie in bed in a trance-like state, dictating as the spirits entered. This is what they would do. They would sit down there, they would call forth devils, familiar spirits, and they would write their scripts out. And you and I have been entertained by them. You and I have allowed them to preach to us. Amen? So that doesn't have anything to do with me. Oh, really? 
Why did it appeal to you then? What did it appeal to? The Spirit of God inside of you? Or the flesh? The flesh. So what was it? Wizardry. They fully know that they're able to do this. They fully understand that it is demonic forces that appeals to your flesh. Do you, I'm sorry, do you, do you think that the devils don't know how to work with mankind? They don't know how to deceive mankind? They don't know how to appeal to your flesh? Oh, yes, they do. They know it quite well. Lucille Ball was a famous film star in the 1940s, but chose to go back to TV acting in 1951. And when a spirit spoke to her, she said, that's when I decided. When a spirit spoke to me, I decided to go to television. It was the spirit of actress Carol Lombard who guided Lucille Ball into taking a chance and accepting the offer to star in I Love Lucy. The glamorous comedian who had died in an airplane crash in 1942 appeared to Lucy in 1951 because Lucille Ball accepted the spirit's urging to take a chance, honey. She made television history. You look at that show and you think about it. Again, I'm not going to talk about content a lot, but that was a show about a woman being rebellious to her husband that lied to her husband constantly. And what do you think the spirit of that does to people when they watch that? See, we're going to talk about that next week, but you've got to understand, I keep giving you hints, but I, I'm trying to stay on topic. But here's what, they, here's what that does. It lowers your subconscious and it, it, and it puts situation ethics into your brain. So subconscious, what you're hearing is situation ethics. Well, I know fornication is wrong. I know lying to my husband is wrong. But see... Right, but the right situation calls for that. Do you see? Do you see how that works? Let me ask you, are you receiving this or are you hardening your heart to it? I I want to ask you that in all honesty. Are you hardening your heart to it or are you receiving it? I hope you're receiving it. I hope you're receiving the Spirit has given a warning which God has called me. Remember that? Remember the calling of God that God gave me as a pastor? He gave to watch for your soul. As they that must give an account. See, I want to be blameless. I want to be, Lord, I, I, I warned. I preached. I watched. I stood on the wall. I screamed loudly. The greatest, I'm going to use a different term here than they use, the greatest fornicating icon of the 20th century, Marilyn Monroe, was known for entering into deep trances. Kenny Kingston, which is that psychic devil that's all over Hollywood, tells us that she would draw attention from the spirit world asking for their guidance. And Monroe herself said, Jekyll and Hyde, more than two. I'm so many people. They shock me sometimes. I wish it was just me. They're they're admitting it. What's that? That's right. They're admitting it. Remember, Mary Magdalene in the Bible had seven devils in her. Peter Sellers, best known for his role in Pink Panther film series, said this about acting. It's rather like being a medium and laying yourself wide open and saying, I want a character to inhabit my body, or I want a character to take charge of me so that I can produce what I hope to produce. He's telling devils to possess him. By the way, Peter Sellers, his career was almost over. He met with Satanists. And they told him that if you will if you will turn over to the devil, then he will give you the ability. And he became an instant star and rose all the way to the top of the box office back then. He's the guy that did the Pink Panther movies, the old ones. You've heard that? I've told you about that that video series. They sold their soul for rock and roll. Well, these sold their soul for pop for Hollywood for popularity to be stars. I sold my soul to the devil. I swear I wanted to be like the Amy Grant of music. Yeah. <laughs> but it didn't work out, and so I sold my soul to the devil. I sold my soul to the devil, I'll never get it back. I sold my soul to the devil, I'll never get it back. Roman is a crazy boy who lives in me, and he says the things that I don't want to say. He was born, you know, just a few months ago. I think he was born out of rage. He was conceived in rage. So he bashes everyone. He threatens to beat people and he's violent. I ask him to leave, but he can't. He's here for a reason. People have brought him out. People conjured him up. Now he won't leave. When they meet me and they speak with me, they're expecting Sasha. I'm really kind of shy and not really shy, but more reserved and um, nothing like Sasha. I guess I wouldn't be very entertaining on the stage. So Sasha comes out <laughs> and 
She's fearless. She can do things that I cannot do when I'm in rehearsal. I mean, I can try, but then it just doesn't happen. I can sing notes and sing strong and do all these things that when I'm just by myself, I can't do. And I remember right before I performed, I raised my hands up. And it was kind of the first time I, I felt something else come into me. And I knew that was going to be my coming out night. Why do you still do it? Why are you still out here? Well, it goes back to the destiny thing. I mean, I made a tough bargain with it, you know, a long time ago, and I'm holding up my hand. What was your bargain? To get where um, I am now. Sh should I ask who you made the bargain with? <laughs> with, 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 you know, with the chief, uh, chief commander. On this earth? <laughs> and on this earth, and, in, uh, and then in a world we can't see. Basically what I did was got on my knees and sort of communicated with the spirits. And when I came out, I was in charge. Powerful scene. Powerful scene. It, it was, I couldn't have acted that. I couldn't have written that down and made a decision to play that. The one-woman entertainment empire known as Oprah has strong affiliations with the demonic realm. The most familiar face on television says, You can not only use your body and physical self. This is how I see acting. I ask my body to be the carrier for the spirits of those who have come before me in a way that is most meaningful to the character. Just become the vehicle for that character. Calling out for these entities to take her over so that she may become a sparkling puppet, Oprah admits of her work before the camera. I tried to empty myself and let the spirit inhabit me. With her global influence, her shows have become a smorgasbord for the New Age agenda. Hmm. Interesting, isn't it? How about, Ro let's make it a little more modern. How about Robin Williams? He said, yeah, literally, it's like possession. All of a sudden, you're in. You just get this energy that starts going. But there's also that thing, it's, it is possession. It is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, when you really can become the other force. Leo, do you think you're blessed? Because I mean, says... it's kind of like channeling. It's kind of like a combination of channeling, possession. I don't know. <laughs> when you get into a character, it, it is like, I'm not. <laughs> that something happens that you don't know where, but it's, it seems to be passing through you. No, it's, um, I, th I don't, you know, try and claim, oh, yes, it's all mine. It comes through you. You know, it's amazing. He, they're more bold than we are. We don't want to tell people, I don't watch it because it's rotten filth from hell, that's why. But they go on to say, yeah, well, I'm possessed, yeah. Hey, Ben. Believe me, by the way, I felt the same conviction that you're feeling right now when I was putting this all together. Why do you think I boxed everything up and put it in all the big, a big old garbage bag and stuck it out there and I'm going to burn it all? Why, why do you think that was? Hey, Ben, I'm not telling you to do that. you got to do what God leads you to do. If he leads you to watch that filth, then you better question who you're listening to and try the spirits whether they're of God. For many false, false prophets have went out. How about Keanu Reeves, the Matrix guy? You heard of that? Some of you have heard of that. The Matrix. Keanu is a very complex guy with lots of demons in him. And I was trying to tap and utilize that, said the director of The Matrix. How about Leonardo DiCaprio? You've heard of him, right? I know some of you have heard of Leonardo DiCaprio. Leo's like a medium. He opens his body and his mind to receive messages from coming from another person's life. Interesting, isn't it? These are not isolated incidents, but a root of wickedness so deep in Hollywood, that it's satanic and it's satanic influence, completely satanic. You have to understand something, folks, that this isn't an accident. It really is planned. It really is. And, and if you are fooled by it, if you and I are fooled by it, I'm going to give you a few more after the, in the next hour, one that will surprise you. I'm going to take you to Little House on the Prairie. We're going to go on a field trip, and we're going to start, we're going to, we're going to look at Little House on the Prairie. <laughs> and uh, Amen. That's right, brother. And 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 you're going to learn a little bit of something you didn't know about Michael Landon. I guarantee you, you didn't know it, and it'll shock you when I when I reveal it to you. But you know what? You need to hear it. You need to understand it, folks. This is not an accident. The root of Hollywood is Satanism. It is Luciferianism. 
It has nothing to do with the Bible. It has nothing to do with God. They hate the God that you serve. They hate the fact that you serve him. They want to entertain you and get you out of, to bewitch you. They're spirits of bewitching power. I'm going to prove to you, probably the worst one of all next hour is Michael Landon. He is the worst one of them all. I took nine seasons of Little House on the Prairie, uh, like 55 DVDs, and I threw them. I'll tell you the story about that in the next hour. Father, we, we pray you'd bless this time that we had, Lord. It's, it's tough, Lord, when, when we come to grips with reality. This is preaching that is practical, Lord. This is showing the spirit world what it's done to us and the practicality of its implications on our lives. Lord, I pray folks understand I'm not preaching that I'm better than anybody. I, I just understand the truth now, Lord, and I want to follow you in it. Lord, I don't want to be entertained by devils. I don't want them in my home. I, there's so much more. Lord, the, the day is growing dark. You said judgment must begin at the house of God. Dear God, help us. We're in trouble. We've been influenced by the world. We're not to love the world, but we've been influenced by the world. Neither the things that are of the world, for all that is of the world. It's evil, Lord. It's the lust of the flesh. It's the pride of life. It's the wickedness of this world. But, Lord, we've been bewitched by it. God, help us to get clear of it. God, convict us. Spirit of God, move in our hearts. Bless the service to follow. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I can tell you that the number one problem in Hollywood was and is and always will be pedophilia. That's the biggest problem. The casting couch even applies to children. Oh, yeah. Not in the same way. It's all done under the radar. Nobody talks about pedophilia. It's the big secret. And it's widespread? Oh, yeah. I was surrounded by them when I was 14 years old. Surrounded. Literally. Didn't even know it. It wasn't until I was old enough to realize what they were and what they wanted and what they were about and the types of people that were surrounding me till I went, oh, my God, they were everywhere like vultures. Second Corinthians chapter 11 in your Bibles. And uh, let's pray for us. Father, we need you, Lord. We're discussing some dark matters here. And, Father, we pray for clarity and understanding. And, uh, Lord, the devil doesn't like preaching on these topics. He likes to fool and to trick people and to subtly deceive them. And, Lord, I pray that we would understand this great truth that you have for us here today. Understand that, that Hollywood has its satanic roots and it has nothing to do with the God of the Bible. And, Lord, I pray you'd bless this time in Jesus' name. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse number 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Now again, notice this. It says, therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed. So we think it a big thing. We think it an amazing thing that we are fooled or duped or, or, or tricked or subtly deceived. But it is not. The Bible's very clear that, that this is Satan's plan. This has always been his plan. And, and he, just, he just has another facet to use it when it comes to this thing of Hollywood and, and, and movies and everything. Now, we talked about some of the, the major movie stars that follow familiar spirits, that some of them are possessed by them. They, they, they follow these what the Bible calls familiar spirits. And they're popular actors, those that really shape the nation, so to speak. It's, it's just unbelievable the amount of influence that Hollywood has had on the people of God. And, and we're to shun these things. We're to stand away from the, uh, stand against these things and not have them. I told you, I, when I, I first started studying this week a few days ago, I just, man, the Lord just led me. I've been, I've been wanting to preach on Hollywood for a while, but I gathered up everything that had to do with Hollywood in my home. I haven't watched it, watched it in a couple of years, but I gathered everything up that was there, put it all in a garbage bag, and I'm going to burn it all because I don't want any of that garbage in my house because it doesn't need to be there. It, we don't need to have that a part of our lives. There's so much that people used to do for God before television and those other programs were invented, programming things were invented. I'm not against technology. I use technology to preach the gospel. We're using it right now to preach the Bible. People are seeing this out there. These will be recorded. They go on sermon audio. People hear these things. Technology can be used for wonderful things. But in this case, Hollywood doesn't because the root of Hollywood is Satanism. That's the root of it. It always has been. It always will be. Now, I'm going to go to one of the most 
famous actors right now or famous directors or actors that's out there and show you exactly. We talked about, you know, the different famous actors down through the the, the, the uh, last hundred years or so. We talked about how Lucille Ball sought familiar spirits. And, and we talked about Leonardo DiCaprio, Keanu Reeves, all of these people, uh, James Dean, who revolutionized, who changed America by his rebel without a cause, and, and fully admits that he was possessed. Uh, these men fully admit that they are seeking out these familiar spirits. Look at your Bible. It's all over your Bible. The Bible talks about shunning those things and, and not to have any of that in our homes and, and, and don't, don't even mess around or hang around with people who seek out familiar spirits. You stay away from them. In the Old Testament, they burned them if they caught them seeking familiar spirits. You know, I, there's, there's a, a man that wrote a, a series of books and, and it's also on sermonaudio.com. You can get it. Now this man, he didn't like Baptists, okay? And he actually wrote Baptists out of the history of New England. So in order to, to fix that, Isaac Backus wrote his own three-volume set on Baptists in, in New England because they were left out of, of, of this other man's set. I, the name escapes me now. <sighs> yeah, Cotton Mather. That's it, Cotton Mather. Yep, Cotton Mather or Mather, however you want to say it. He had a son called um, Increase Mather. That's right, yeah. And they wrote a series of books. And, and in those books, I have met home unbelievable demonic stories though, of, of demonic activity in America that was taking place at that time. And people say, oh, that didn't happen in America. Yes, it did. You have to remember, when those men came over, America, America was full of a bunch of heathens. I mean, they had demonic spirits. I mean, they, they, out in the open lands where Indians were, they were serving false gods. They were, they were serving idols. There was activity all over the place. I could, story after story of abortions that were done, of, of bestiality and other things that were taking place in there that they, they wrote about that was judged at that time. I'm not going to get into that. I'm just simply telling you that's what America, that's what was going on here. We're, there's two things that surprise people. The wickedness of America, which it shouldn't. And, and the second thing that surprises the Baptists were persecuted in America. Those two things surprise people. But they, <laughs> but they were persecuted wherever they went, including America, especially America. So anyway, but, um, but so understand this wickedness has always went on in this country. But Hollywood, the rise of this satanic spirit took place. It was subtle at first. It's not so subtle now. You look at, and we're not going to talk about programming this week. We're going to talk about it next week. But the programming, the programming that took place, that takes place, it's all demonic now. I mean, now especially, it's blatantly demonic. Everything out there, all about vampires and, and darkness and fallen angels and wickedness and demons and fornication and, and all of that, those things. Our homosexuality, it's all pushed blatantly. What did it start as? Subtly. It started subtly. That's how Satan works. But the more reprobate America gets, the more blatant it is. And now, blatant. Some of the shows that you have watched mock God openly. Mock Him openly. And laugh at Him. And laugh at His law. And laugh at everything that, that he, he holds, that God holds us to or wants us to live by. Okay, so this man that I want to turn to right now and, and talk about a little bit, is probably the most surprising name in all of Hollywood for most people, most Christians. It's Michael Landon. You've seen some of you have seen Little House on the Prairie, as I told you. I'm not speaking from any innocence. Like I've never watched it. I I bought my wife about maybe five or six years ago. No, longer than that, seven or eight years ago. I bought her all nine seasons of Little House on the Prairie, and I watched some of them with her and everything like that. Watched a lot of them with her, probably most of them, and I threw them all away the other day. I threw them all in the trash heap. Amen? And I'm going to burn them all. I'm going to burn them all. I'm going to enjoy burning them too. Because Michael Landon, he had devils in him. And listen to what his daughter said about him. I honestly believe my dad had telepathic powers. Whatever it's called, he had some kind of special powers. That's why he was able to connect with others. You know, he had a natural star on the palm of his left hand, and it was no gimmick left over from his teenage werewolf days either. Ah, she said, well, that's just one comment. Okay, well, that's the one. Cheryl Landon also states that her dad had moments of psychic awareness. Now, if those were just said about me, I'd be mad if they, if that's all somebody, if you said, well, now come on, Pastor, are you going off with of uh, somebody's two comments? I mean, that's pretty, I mean, somebody could say lies about you. That's true, they could. That's right, let every word be established. 
She states that he was like an angel of light who believed in the oneness of mankind. That's what Michael Landon said. He, was like, he, he believed in the oneness of mankind. Now, this became a supernatural reality when in 1959, now listen to this, he came into contact with a spirit who identified itself as the ghost of his dead father. As he knelt, Landon recalls hearing, It's okay, kid. Don't worry. I'm fine. Everything's going to be all right. Landon said he knew that this spirit would remain alive and always close to him, and he was comforted that he would be able to communicate with it. Consequently, Landon had the sudden wherewithal to pen scripts that would just pour out of him. Cheryl Landon recalls, he was left-handed and wrote at such a fast pace, the result was legible only to his secretary. He'd start on a story and go right through to the end, sometimes staying up all night. What he would do is said that this spirit of his father's, this familiar spirit, he would put his pen down, and that familiar spirit would tell him what to write, and he would just keep writing it. Demonic. Devilish. Being led by devils. And when you and I watch things like that, we're being entertained by devils. So that's pretty hard to hear. It sure is. It's even harder to receive once you receive it and understand that you allowed yourself to be manipulated by devils. Amen? Remember, I just, I just put it all in a garbage bag, so I'm not speaking from any purity my whole life of never watching anything. I'm telling you, when I found it, I want to be like the Corinthians. They had a revenge against evil. Paul said that, that, that you had this revenge. You had a vengeance against what was wrong. And you did that which was right when you found out what was wrong. When Paul reproved them, they didn't get mad at Paul. They sorrowed because he made them feel bad. But they sorrowed after a godly sort. Because godly sorrow worketh repentance, not to be repented of. But the sorrow of this world worketh death. So what they do, they sorrowed, but they said, I'm glad you sorrowed, because it made you godly. It made you put away those things. It made you get some things right. It made you throw it all away. You've got to answer yourself, friend. What's more important, the love of God or the love of devils? The pleasure of devils or the love of God? The pleasure of this flesh that is fleeting, that will end, or eternal blessings from the Lord? Which is more important to you? Entertaining your flesh? Michael Landon said this, I felt my father's presence with me, enlightening my memories, helping me to commit to paper the feelings I had. I had really heard my father speaking to me from the other dimension, filling my mind with just the right words. The story came so fast and was so right, in three days the script was complete. Now, if you've ever watched any of those shows, the one thing that you will realize is he had an uncanny ability to make someone emotionally attached to his programs. If you've ever watched that show, you will notice that. I mean, you could bring, I, I've, I've watched it before and it brought tears to my eyes, some of the things. Some of the scenes that they used would put you in such that emotion. What is that? It's the devil. That's what it is. It's appealing to the flesh and it was of doctrines of devils. It was led by spirits of devils. You say, I don't like that. I don't like it either. But ask yourself what you do like. Do you like the truth or do you love what's false? Because it's not easy to take, is it? That's right. Let me say this again like I said in the beginning. Hollywood hates God and I hate Hollywood. Plain and simple. Because God hates it. God hates it the wickedness that's brought about. The industry is wicked. And God hates it. Listen to what he said. And this is true. I can tell you from my own experience. I made people reach into their lives and look for a higher power. God or even themselves to solve their problems. <laughs> See that? God with humanism. What is that? That's the hybrid worship. That's the worship of devils. That's the twilight worship. The mixture of darkness and light. Every script I've written in every series I've produced... Not only Little House on the Prairie and Highway to Heaven, but the ones that didn't make it and the ones I just started have expressed the things I most deeply believe. I believe that there is God in all of us. Yeah. It's the lie of the devil. Ye shall be as gods. And it was taught masterfully. He did it masterfully. See, here's what Michael Landon was able to do through the power of Satan. He was able to teach you morality instead of biblical holiness. He was able to give a pass for morality. So you would watch that program and think, well, this is a morally upright program, but morality is fleeting. It doesn't last. 
Christ's holiness in your soul lasts. But morality does not last. Morality is Satan's version of what's right. It's just the minimal. It's the minimal. And it's a fleshly thing and it's fleeting, but holiness is of the Lord. I want you to listen to this. I'm, I'm going to give you a few others too as well. Uh, I'm going to go back to one Marilyn Monroe for a second, but I want you to listen to this. I want you to understand how Michael Landon died. I want you to listen close and pay close attention and understand this one thing. You can't play with the devil. He plays for keeps. You don't make a deal with the devil. All these movie stars and, and all these rock and roll musicians that have sold their soul to rock and roll, they have sold their soul to the devil to be famous. Actors have sold their souls to the devil to be wealthy and to have things in this life. Musicians have done it. Sports figures have done it. They make a pact with the devil. And you can't make a deal with the devil because you will lose your life and your soul for all of eternity. Listen to this. Michael Landon died this way. His daughter reported on his deathbed. He raised his fists and clawed at the air. I heard him mumbling, No, not yet, he said clearly. I'm not ready. No, I don't want to go. The nurse told us Dad had spent the night raising his hands and pawing at the air as though he was trying to keep something away. He died and went to a devil's hell is where he went clawing all the way. Why? Because he thought he could play with demons and he made a deal with devils. He made a pact with devils and finally those spirits consumed him in the end and he died and went to hell. Clawing and kicking and screaming all the way. That's a trend in Hollywood, by the way, with movie stars. The satanic influence. Here's another one, though. What did Marilyn Monroe do? How did she become so popular? Now, believe me, this will be G-rated, obviously. But listen to this. In her, where she developed her power from her persuasive... You have to understand something. Marilyn Monroe was had a, had a devilish persuasiveness about her. Yes, she was an attractive woman, but she had a devilish persuasion that she was able to persuade people very easily. That's not just due to beauty. There was other things behind that, at which she will fully admit. When the psychic Kenny Kingston came to her room and everything and talked to her and would meet with her like you would meet with a preacher or something, she would meet with a psychic. And he said, we begin with the visualization technique used many times by those of us who believe in psychic phenomena. I asked Marilyn to see herself surrounded by what is called the white light of protection. Light which you can visualize as encompassing your entire body. So what did she do? As you would pray to God, she prayed this. I, Marilyn, place the white light around the top of my head, my eyes, my nose, my mouth, but never touching my body. The white light of protection continues around my neck, my shoulders, my chest, never touching my body. The white light totally protects me and keeps me. Do you understand that she was demon-possessed and she was calling upon devils for power? And that's that same old story of white magic and dark magic, and it's the same devil's argument. What happens? Well, again, I'm not supposed to be talking about programming, but I'll do it again. Uh, in, In this sense, you were taught when you were from the Word of God, you're taught what? All magic is wicked. Wizards are wicked, right? Warlocks, witches, necromancers, those are familiar spirits, all wicked. You're taught that from the Bible. There's absolutes, right? Satanists hate absolutes. Do what thou wilt is the whole of the law, Aleister Crowley said. That was, that was what they, they believe. Do whatever you want to do. There is no, there is no rules. Do whatever you want. The law is do whatever you want. What is that? Out of chaos comes order. New world order. That's all that is. She would call down these devils to protect her or to use her or inhabit her. And they did. They did. It was said that Clark Gable died. You know, so many of you might know who Clark Gable is. He died. And Marilyn Monroe thought that that Clark Gable was mad at her. So, because, and thought it was her fault because he died. She, he died. So she went to her psychic and he said this, Marilyn, we'll contact Gable in spirit and settle this once and for all. Oh, could we really do that? She squealed with excitement. Then, but won't he be angry with me? Maybe he won't speak to me, she said. 
I assured her that I felt Gable was eager to communicate, and during my next visit with Marilyn, instead of reading, we held a brief seance in the memory of Clark Gable. As I suspected, his spirit came in quickly, to Mar- and to Marilyn's delight, Gable reassured us. You think that he really meant it, Marilyn asked when the seance had ended. Marilyn, the spirits don't lie, I reminded her. You're right, you're right, she smiled. I feel so much better. So the devils don't lie, is what she, was, what she believed. Even though Satan is the father of lies. Yeah, he's the father of it. He's the fa- he'll be the father of the great lie, the Antichrist. The father of it, the great lie. She died a horrible, wicked sinner's death. And she's burning in hell. That woman was, was a, she was under what's called, a program called, that by the way, Anti, or I mean, uh, Alistair Crowley invented. This, listen, this, this kingdom of darkness is all connected. You've got to understand that. It's, it's all connected. And Aleister Crowley invented the mind control MK Ultra techniques and everything else that was out there. He was a part of all of those things. He was a part of all, all the groundwork to all those things. And she was under that MK Ultra mind altering thing. She was under that. Okay? That was part of what she was. And she was turned into a, a, a fornicating slave, basically, is what she was turned into. That's what she was when she died. I mean, that's, that's all that she was. Do you understand how the the root of Hollywood is wicked and satanic? The very core of it, something as simple, how subtle is it that Little House on the Prairie or something like that would be written, the script and everything else that that he would... Now, I'm not talking about the books that that Laura Ingalls Wilder wrote. or That's not the same thing. Those books are not evil. That's just a, a child's life. Um, no, it's what they, when they put this to, Michael Landon wrote the scripts for all of those, and they don't follow the books anyway, but for the most part, but, but he, he wrote all these extra things. He did all these things. Not to mention Highway to Heaven, which taught a different way to, 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 uh, be, to get to heaven and to be saved. Did not teach salvation by the Lord Jesus Christ. Taught a morality. Uh, taught a gray area. Didn't teach white. Didn't teach black. Taught a gray area in the middle. Now, in case you don't agree or don't believe me, I'm going to give you a quote from Anton LaVey. That's the last witness you'll get. Does anybody, everybody know who Anton LaVey is? Anton LaVey was the high priest of the Church of Satan. He was the high priest of it. He says this about television. The birth of television was a magical event foreshadowing its satanic significance. The first commercial broadcast was aired in Whopper, I can't get in Nuggets, something, I don't know, April, April 30th, 1939, at the New York World's Fair. Since then, TV's infiltration has been so gradual, so complete, that no one even noticed. People don't need to go to church anymore. They get their morality plays on television. LeVay espouses more of his Satanist philosophy and describes in detail how he sees television as the major mainstream infiltration of the new Satanic religion. He likens the entertainers and newscasters to the clergy of the TV religion who use their cathode ray pulpit to spread what he calls the word. He says that the local newscasters are the parish priests who are part of what he calls a church. You know, the Satanists are bold about it. They say, you know, you dumb Christians, you're you're, you're watching television, you know? (laughs) Oh, that's a tool of Satan, you know. You know that, right? I'm not, I, I, I'm linking us all together here. I'm not, I'm not singling myself out as something special that I haven't been succumbed to this because I have just like everybody else has. The point is, is that what I'm trying to tell you is that the, the Satanists, they know it. They, they just, they just admit it boldly. Yeah, yeah, that's a, de- that's a tool of the devil right there. What, what the, all the programming, all that's a tool of the devil. Yeah, that was Satan's master plan right there. While you and I are digging through a bunch of mud to try to find a jewel, why not just burn it all? And tell them they can have it. <laughs> Let the devil have it. You know, Satanist Anton LaVey, the high priest there of the Satanic Church, said he had a personal relationship with Sammy Davis Jr. Yeah, Sammy Davis Jr. was a Satanist. The Rat Pack, you know? Frank Sinatra, all those guys. The, the, was it Dean Martin, Frank Sinatra, and, and uh, Sammy Davis? They, they were, well, they were fornicating devils anyway in the first place. A bunch of God-haters is all they were. But he was a Satanist, and he hung around Anton LaVey. There's pictures all over the internet. You can see those two uh, hugging each other and, and, and shaking hands and hugging each other all over the internet. Of pi- pictures of those together. Let me ask you a question. If the root is bad, isn't the fruit bad? 
This is all the. Did you think Hollywood has gotten morality or, or gotten biblical holiness to it? Hollywood hates God. They've war against God. They war against everything that you hold dear in this Bible. They war against it. If you teach a doctrine of this Bible, they will teach a perversion of that doctrine. They will pervert it. They will mock God. Anton LaVey, founder of the Church of Satan, says this, Many of you have already read my writings identifying TV as the new God. There is a little thing I neglected to mention up until now. Television is the major mainstream infiltration of the new satanic religion. The root of Satan is the root. The, Satan is the root of Hollywood. He's the founder of it. He's the main promoter of it. His methods are used to propagate the messages of wickedness. Hollywood is the devil's church. Its ministers are actors that engage in the deception of mankind. Mostly, all these actors say the best actors are the ones that are able to be like a medium and have spirits work through them to be the be, to, to play that part. And by the way, that's not new either. That's been going on since the Passion Plays in Greece thousands of years ago. It is not new. Socrates talked about it. Plato, all those men talked about the fact that actors would come and they would dress up as the best devils and those that could act the most like the devil were the ones that were as if they were, they were possessed by the same devils. Because they were. They admit it totally. The actors are evangelists that preach the message that Hollywood wants you to hear. Is there any clear-cut message of God from Hollywood? Is it all not, even those that try to hold to some morality, isn't it all tainted with sin and wickedness? You've got to show that they, and again, I know I'm not talking about programming here, but I keep mentioning it because it's kind of intertwined with just beginning here. But you got a show out there that was called Seventh Heaven. It was supposed to be about some preacher and, and, and morality and family. Uh, the daughter um, has a baby out of wedlock. The pastor has no morals. He preaches, or no biblical, biblical alley to him. He, he doesn't preach the Bible. He preaches a little sermon. His daughter becomes the preacher. His daughter becomes the assistant pastor. It's just a, a, like a morality message that is preached from the pulpit. It's not a Bible message. It doesn't call down sin. What is that? It's telling you what to think. And every time you and I are entertained by it, we are being told what to believe. We are being influenced. It is lowering our inhibitions. It is telling us to believe something that is contrary to God's Word. Why? It's putting it in front of your face. I'm going to talk about this next week, but let me just say this in short here. Do you think that God really wanted His children to see images of rape, bestiality, homosexuality, fornication, situation ethics, thieves, murders, robbers, fornicators, haters of God, truth breakers? Did God want you to see all that and put that in front of a screen so you could watch it all day? Is that what God wanted from his children, for his children to see? Think about it. You think about it for one second. How about all these cop shows that are on that show how to, how to get into the mind of a murderer and tell you how, how they did it? <laughs> What's that teaching you? How to murder somebody and get away with it? Teaching you that, that the police will save you? Teaching you, not to mention a mixed police state type message in the first place, but uh, that you're to turn to that for everything, that, that you can trust the law, you can trust everything else, how, how to get away with murdering somebody, all of the fornication that goes along with all the drinking, the booze, the liquor, everything else, all of those things, drugs, fornication, wickedness, all in front of you, teaching you that. What is that doing to you? Is it causing you and I to accept it? Is it making it so it lowers our inhibitions? Like, you know, that's not so bad. I've heard worse than that before. Where is the shamefacedness and the shock and the awe of God's people today? Where is it when we place this smut in front of our eyes and we've tried to find something good in it and there's nothing good at all in it? There's nothing good in it. It's a bunch of garbage. It's just a picture of hell is what it is. But we've allowed it in our homes. We've allowed it in front of our eyes. Do you think that that won't have an impact on your thoughts? Do you think that seeing those shows, you say, yeah, but good wins in this show. Yeah, but they're showing you wickedness right in front of you. And they're doing it. Did you check how subtle Satan is. I, I gotta get off this. I'm gonna cover this next week. But, but the subtlety of Satan is absolutely astounding. Why? Well, because you teach your children that you're not supposed to do all these things. And we preach about it. Don't do this, 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 and this. Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. Stay away from this. Don't do this. And then one program goes, shows a hero that comes up and fights the guy that does all those things. So they show all those things to you. 
So you're seeing all those things anyway. You're seeing murders and thefts and fornication. Everything. Oh, but the good triumph. You're putting it all right in front of your face with no moral absolutes. No absolutes. No gauge for what's right and wrong. Do what thou wilt. That's the message. Satanism. For such are false prophets, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. We'll cover that next week a little more. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose ends shall be according to their works. Don't be deceived, folks. If the root is bad, then the fruit is bad. The root of Hollywood is is satanic from its name. It's pagan ritualistic. We went over that. It's name. How witches use the Hollywood, the wand of Holly, and they use it for what? For sleep, for spells of sleep. You say, oh, that's crazy. That doesn't mean anything. Oh, yes, it does mean something. Because when you watch television, after ten minutes, it goes, and you just shut everything off. And subliminal messages are given to you throughout. And advertisers admit this, by the way. This is not a secret. Nobody's trying to hide this from anybody. They just know you and I are too dumb to shut the television off. Amen! <laughs> oh, these, these guys aren't going to shut it off anyway. We'll tell them. We'll t- do you know how bold and blatant the devil is? He just tells you what he's going to do. And watches all the Christians uh, follow, follow through with it and follow his pernicious ways. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Are we? Are we ignorant of them? You and I will get mad as the devil for a preacher standing up and preaching something that we need to hear. Why? Because you might have to give some entertainment up in your life. Well, you know what? If it bothers us, then we better get rid of it now because it's going to consume us. It's going to be the death of our spiritual walk. If we can't give it up now and walk away from it, if we can't throw it away and follow God in everything and get to know, what would happen if God's church got to know the Bible again? What would happen if you threw that TV away and you kicked it in and you actually opened your Bible up and started learning from God? But how is God going to teach you anything when doctrines of devils are filling your head? How? How can God get any spiritual messages to you? What if God has something that He wants you to do in your life, but He can't get through to you because sin is at the door? You ever think some of the stupid things you and I do in our life has to do with the fact that we have got so many other messages coming to us that we can't hear the message from God? So we hear something pure from the Word of God, we just get mad at the messenger. We just get mad at the preacher. I'm mad at you for preaching that. You know, I don't care if you get mad at me. It doesn't matter to me. You didn't call me. God did. Amen. And I love you. I love you enough to tell you the truth. And I also love you enough to live by example and take all that stuff and throw it in a garbage bag and burn it. Amen. I love you enough to be the example you need to see, like God called me to be. That's not exalting me. It's exalting Him. I had to do my repenting over it. I'm done with it. The devil and his demons keep all their garbage and their smut and their Hollywood and their other and, and their 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 basis morality. You and I, what would God do with us if we would just understand that this is all satanic and we don't need any of it in our lives? Why do we need it? Why can't we be pleased by God? Why can't we enjoy our families again? Why can't we put all that stuff down and enjoy and be a family again? And throw that garbage away and start living for God. And start getting out in that world and doing something for Christ. Because the days are getting darker. And sin is rising. And the spirit of Antichrist is rising. And we're going like this. While the whole world goes to hell. And your children are influenced by doctrines of devils. And this is what's happening. Oh, but that's okay. I read my Bible. Yeah, I know. But when you let Satan's evangelist preach to you every day of the week, (laughs) and then you hear one, one or two sermons during the week, you ever wonder why you don't feel good in the spirit sometimes, or you don't, you're, you're not walking in the spirit, you've got no spiritual strength or no spiritual power for the Lord. You got, you can't walk with God. You ever think it might be because you're being entertained by devils, and God says, I'm not going to walk with you when you're walking with that. I can't speak to you because you're already being spoken to. Think about it. wonder why I have spiritual doubts and fears and problems and concerns and, and I, I, I don't have a strong, I don't have a strong faith and well, well, why would you? You're filling your lives with a bunch of garbage. How can you have strong faith when you're filling your life with wickedness? When you're being entertained by devils? 
People that openly admit that they're demon-possessed and they laugh about it. Then you wonder why you're shaky and you have doubts and you don't have a strong testimony. Well, Satan's evangelists are preaching to you all the time. And then when they give the altar call, you're down there on your knees watching it. They're giving you the altar call and you're, you're watching it. You've already answered the call. You know what? It's time God's people just let the devil and his demons go to hell and walk with God. It's time we, we put away the curious books. Amen? Before we get to that, let me say this. Ephesians 6.12, you've heard it for about four or five messages now. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. By the way, I had some evangelist tell me or some missionary tell me, if you preach on Hollywood, you won't spiritually fill your people. If you preach against Hollywood, it's wickedness. You won't fill them. Oh, yeah? Why do you think it's so quiet in here right now? Because the Spirit of God is convicting. That's why. And there ain't a man in here that can say I'm guiltless in this area. Not one of us. Not one of us. So I laughed at him when he said that. that Someone couldn't be spiritually filled by learning to put away the devil's dramas. By preaching against sin and wickedness and calling God's people to repentance. And say, you know what, it's time we put away these foolish things. It's time we, we call out sin for what it is. It's time for God's people to have a vengeance against evil. It all depends if you can put away those things from among you. And you can say, I don't need it. We have no idea what God would do with this church. Look what he's already done with it. If you and I would determine in our hearts that we're done with that garbage. I've already determined it. I'm done with it. My family's done with it. I determined it for all of them. Amen. You know, as a father, you can determine it for all of them. In fact, I remember I was, and I'm not, I'm not picking on my wife, but I was talking to her about something, and and we were just kind of talking about it, and I said, well, why don't you just do this right now? I said, never mind, I'll do it. I got out of the way. I walked downstairs. I threw it over in the corner and got rid of all of it right there. I said, that's done. But you know what? Let me tell you something. How the flesh works. I said, well, you know what? I bought you these for Christmas. Maybe this might be all right. That was those nine series of Little House on the Prairie. I, that was before I read about Michael Landon. Before I under, I heard something like that before, but I, I just wasn't settled about it, and I didn't think about it ever again. But then I went back up. I, I sat with my wife. And I said, "Well, we both looked at each other and said, you know what? We better just toss it." And I said, "Yeah, you're right. We tossed it." I went upstairs and, and read that about him. I said, "Man, I'm sure glad I tossed those." Amen. I'm sure glad I threw those away. By the way, there was there's hundreds of dollars worth of stuff in there. I don't care because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, folks. We're wrestling against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Hollywood is infested with devils, and its evangelists are infested with devils. And you're to cast devils out in the name of Jesus. And by the way, the only way that you and I can do something for God is if we get all these devils away from us. We're not going to be able to do anything for God. Who are we fooling? You think those old Baptists, you think those old-time Baptists would have bunkied around with any of that stuff? They were walking with God, brother, building churches, building church houses out in the middle of nowhere, starving, freezing, suffering, right, beaten, killed, murdered, destroyed, children killed, died, burying 13 of your children on the mission field. Every time I, I, Isaac McCoy came back, he was burying another child. But you might cry because you've got to get rid of your video. You and I might just start bawling if we got to throw away a movie. God help us. We're a sorry lot. Amen. Sorry. We wonder, we wonder why this world's going to hell. Because the church is going to hell, that's why. Look at the churches today. Look at them, they're a mess. I'll leave you with this. Turn to Acts chapter 19. I want you to think about these verses until next week. Acts chapter 19 and verse number 18. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Come on, that repentance isn't in the Bible. That was something just, that was something that, that's something John the Baptist and Jesus preached, that repentance. Come on. Paul didn't really preach that. I mean, the dispensation, the dispensation uh, just kept coming, right? That was a different dispensation. That was the Jewish church, not the, not Paul's gospel that he preached. He didn't know what well, looks like here. It says in many of them that believed, came and confessed and showed the deeds, showed their deeds. Notice this now. I want you to think about this this week. 
Many of them also which used curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. I had somebody asked me, said, well, why, why don't you just gather all those up and go sell them? You could make a lot of money on those. I looked at him and I said, you know what? God will bless me if I just burn them. Why would I put somebody else? Why would I, would I would allow somebody else to be influenced by demons, by devils? What am I going to sell that and make a profit off those devils for? It was my own stupid fault for buying them in the first place. You think I'm going to go try to make a profit off? I guarantee you God will take care of me. I don't need any money from this, this garbage. I'm going to burn it all. I don't want any of it. Let it go. It's wicked. Found it 50,000 pieces of silver. That's a lot of money. But look what happened in verse number 20. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. You see that? So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Let's get serious. Now, you can have all these evangelists that travel around the country and preach revival to you. And you can, I'm not picking on them, sort of. Um, but you, you can have all of them that do that and, and, and they travel around. Like I, I understand that. You can have them all do that. And they'll call everybody revival. Oh, we're going to have a revival meeting. Well, let's get real. We don't need to have any evangelists in to do that. Amen. We don't need that. We just need to believe the Word of God. And what happened? They gathered all the wickedness that was around them, and they burned it. Why'd they burn it? Well, they didn't throw it away so somebody else would pick it up and grab it. They didn't sell it so they made money off of it. They burned it. Why? It's a picture of the hell. Picture of devil's hell right there. They burned it. It was done. Purified by fire. Gone. Destroyed. Burned up in the flames. But as long as you and I are going to be entertained by devils, we'll never have the power of God. As long as you and I are going to look at things on television and, and, and make those things of more importance than the spiritual walk with God. You know what? Some of you got children and grandchildren that are zombies that are walking around. They can't figure out they're lost and dying in their sins and on their way to hell. And you want to know why? Because you're playing with devils, that's why. You're being entertained by devils and doctrines of devils. And how's anybody ever going to take the spiritual walk seriously when you don't and I don't? So what do we do? Burn it all. Burn it. Get rid of it. Get it out of your life. Amen? What do we need it for? Honestly, if it dishonors God, are we serious about, about our spiritual walk or not? Let me ask you a question. Are there movies in your home that shouldn't be there? You don't have to answer me. I don't want you to answer me. This is one of those questions where you need to, you need to have come to Jesus meeting yourself. Amen? Are there things in your, in, the, in your home right now that you need to destroy? Are there? You need to get rid of some movies? Some things that don't honor God? Folks, if the root is satanic, then the fruit is. So, yeah, but I got some good movies. They're not that bad. They don't show. Really? Well, if you show me a movie, you bring me one of the movies, I can show you something wrong with it. There's always something. But there's always something in those messages. Why? Well, the appealing of all and everything that they do was under satanic influence. That's what it was all about. I've given you like seven or eight people from Hollywood, main actors, actually about ten when I get ready to the quotes of some of them, of main actors in Hollywood and what they're about. Not to mention, we didn't even talk about Tom Cruise and Scientology and all the others. By the way, which is another Aleister Crowley invention. And, and all those, they're all offshoots of Aleister Crowley Satanism. That's, they're all the same. You're being entertained by people that mock your God, that hate Him, that want, and you're making millions for them. You're helping them propagate a false gospel, a false wicked lifestyle. We are paying for their wicked lifestyle. So... We complain about what Hollywood does. Well, most preachers don't because they won't, they won't touch it with a 10-foot pole. But we, we complain about what they do and we preach against, oh, that's wickedness. But when we buy their movies, what are we doing? We're funding their lifestyle to go out and be sodomites, to practice witchcraft, and fund all the other wicked things. By the way, it's all attached to Satanism. I mean, all of it is one. It's the same mystery of iniquity. It's all the same. It's all the same, folks. We gotta get serious. We gotta get serious. We gotta go home, men, and we gotta set our families down, and we gotta talk. And we gotta say, there's some things that we're gonna get out of our home. We gotta understand that they're wrong and they're wicked in the sight of God's eyes, and get rid of them. 
I'm not telling you to do it. You do what God leads you to do. You have all the information that you needed today in that portion. We'll cover the programming next week, and then we'll have a sermon on Disney. You say goodbye to Mickey Mouse. I'm setting that rat trap for Mickey, and he's gone. Mickey and Donald and all of them. And Toy Story and all of them. They're all, they're all, they're all going bye bye. Hey Amen. I'm going to show you, I'm going to tell you why, and I'm going to show you why. So you're informed and you understand the truth about it. Why? But I'm telling you, they're devils. They're devils. Walt Disney was the biggest pervert that ever lived. A one of them. He was an absolute 33rd degree Mason and a pervert. And I can prove it to you. And I will prove it to you. Lord willing. I'm not taken out by next week. (laughs) I'll prove it to you. Listen, I want you to understand the truth. I want you to be armed with it. I, I, listen, I'm not picking on anybody I, I, but myself. And the devil. I hate, I hate the devil. I hate his kingdom. I, I, I've, I, I've seen and heard the most wicked things you can ever imagine in my life. And I know what the devil's doing to God's people. God's people are so hypnotized right now that they, they're so hip, I believe that Hollywood is the agent of, that has hypnotized God's people. And they, they, they have this mixed view of what's right and what's wrong. And we need to understand that Hollywood is Satanistic. Its root is Satanistic and its fruit is. Why would I try to look at... It's like trying to look for some spiritual value in hell. Let me find something virtuous in hell. So why would we even want to dig through it to find something that's not there? It's the lie of the devil. It's subtle and it's a lie. Father... I pray you'd call us all to repentance. Lord, help us to understand. Dear God, we need you. We don't need all this garbage. We need you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.